So now that we've finally survived the 90s anime, it's time to take a look at Sailor Moon Crystal and judge the story as close as it's been adapted from the manga. Spoilers beware! Like in the 90s anime, our story begins with Usagi meeting the talking cat Luna and becoming Sailor Moon. However, we don't have to wait eight episodes for her to meet Sailor Mercury, thank God, nor ten to meet Sailor Mars. It's all pretty much the same as we meet each guardian, though Usagi discovers pretty early on that Tuxedo Mask is Mamoru Chiba, who's been searching for the legendary Silver Crystal. That's when Minako, aka Sailor V, steps in, claiming to be the reincarnated Moon Princess. Only plot twist, holy shit, is that Sailor Moon is actually the real Moon Princess, and Minako was just trying to protect her. Who would have guessed? Anyways, we learn about the past of the Silver Millennium, and oh no, Mamoru has been kidnapped and no, he's back, but he's, he's brainwashed and... Oh, it did, no! Beryl shows up to kill everyone with her demon weave, but Sailor Venus comes to the rescue. Did you honestly think a rusty old sword like that could hurt me? <laughs> so Sailor Moon saves the day because, of course, Beryl dies and Usagi goes after Mamoru into the Dark Kingdom's lair. But then when they have to get the Silver Crystal out of Mamoru's body, Usagi kills him and then tries to kill herself. We will get there because I have a lot to say. Anyways, whoop de fucking do turns out the pocket watch somehow stopped her suicide. How? I don't fucking care. Anyways, we battle the evil gas cloud, save the world, and wow, the Moon Kingdom's been revived. Is anyone living there? No. Does humanity spot it with their satellites, or do astronauts come across it? No. It's just kind of sitting there. Oh well. So all is well, as at least the characters remember all this shit and haven't forgotten anything. <laughs> Usagi and Mamoru are together, and things are looking... You should have the legendary silver crystal. <laughs> Hurry up and hand it over! Now, or I'll shoot! Oh, um... Oh, well. Oh, what a cliffhanger. I know it sounds like I'm very tired and bleh about this anime, mainly because I am very tired as of writing the script and recording it, but I actually really enjoyed this version of Sailor Moon way more than I thought I would. It's certainly a huge step up from the 90s anime, that's for sure. First off, since we're basing the story off the manga, I have to say that the pacing is much better. Some say it's too fast, but I beg to differ. Each episode has a specific purpose, whether introducing a character or revolving around a large plot event. Not only that, but the story is also much more intense. Characters are more willing to be vulnerable and acknowledge the gravity of their situation, and the Dark Kingdom actually presents a legitimate threat throughout. Unlike in the 90s anime, where they come across as bumbling fools with idiotic plans that only tend to work because the main characters are even bigger idiots. The romance especially is so much better this time around. No longer does Mamoru act like a douchey piece of shit to Usagi for no goddamn reason. They actually bond over their motivations and hardships, with Usagi caring about Tuxedo Mask risking everything to find out who he is, and Mamoru admiring Sailor Moon's strength and ability to bring people together. That all said, the character arcs do suffer as they're kinda left to the wayside. The Inner Guardians don't get much to do after their introductory episodes. They do kick more ass than they did in the 90s anime, but while their incredibly awful tendencies from the 90s anime are gone, gone also are any interesting character interactions, save for when the Viz Dub comes to the rescue. Even bits from the manga with cute interactions have been cut. The Four Kings of Heaven especially get screwed over. They're kept alive for most of the story arc, unlike in the manga where they're each killed one by one, and we get to keep their backstory as Prince and Damien's bodyguards, not to mention their adorable titles. Knight of Patience and Harmony. Knight of Wisdom and Comfort. I am Zoisite, Knight of Purity and Healing. Knight of Virtue and Affection. Oh, you precious. However, their romances with the Inner Guardians are so rushed that not only does the audience not care, but this all comes across as a joke, to the point where when Metalia bullshit kills the kings all at once, I kinda laugh my ass off. And the suicide. Oh boy. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't mind Princess Serenity doing this, because that can be interpreted as a past mistake that fucked everything up, which it did. However, when you have Usagi and her current life trying to kill herself, that is just... Ugh. That is just distasteful. Yeah, it's problematic, especially because things like this tend to give people ideas. Side note, if you are genuinely struggling, please know that you are loved and that this kind of thing is never the answer. There are people who love you and are willing to help you. I will leave links in the description. Back to the story, not only is Usagi trying to kill herself problematic, but it also ruins her supposed resolve and strength that she's supposed to have garnered by this point. You couldn't just have her pass out after killing Mamoru from an attack by Metalia. Also, how in the fuck does a pocket watch stop a sword? 
How did she pass out when she wasn't really stabbed? I'm so lost. While I appreciate the show trying to mimic the manga's art style, it doesn't translate very well to animation. Even in the corrected animations, though the fact those are even a thing annoys me, there's still plenty of stilted animation, awkward or just plain bad camera angles, or terrifying shots worthy of meandom for eons to come. That's not even commenting on the CGI transformation sequences. I get it, Toei wants to be cheap, but dear god these look horrifying. At least in the Moon Pride music video the models look... Not totally demonic, but in the transformations, they look like the Guardian's 2D faces have been plastered onto 3D mannequins. God, they are fugly. That all said, the music is fantastic. Yasuharu Takanashi made some masterpieces working on the show, and they nearly saved the god-awful transformation sequences. Nearly. You tried, buddy. Still, the score is epic and fantastical and fits perfectly with Crystal's tone. Not to mention, the Viz dub actually managed to return some humanity to the series. Not only are the voice actors returning from the Viz dub of the 90s anime fantastic, but Deb Crane, the translator and writer for Crystal's English dub, did a splendid job of making sure more people could enjoy this version of the story. I highly recommend checking out the Love and Justice podcast episode where they interview her. Link also in the description. So all in all, Sailor Moon Crystal Season 1 is a pretty good adaptation. Not great by any means, but it's also not as awful as a lot of people made it out to be, besides the friggin' you know what. That said, if you're going to use it as your introduction to Sailor Moon, even though I said there would be spoilers, I would recommend going with the manga first and then checking out Sailor Moon Crystal. Also keep in mind, any issues you may have with the first two seasons of Crystal are largely corrected by the third season, where the new director provided a total overhaul for both the art style and the writing, and we even see a return of the 2D transformation sequences, and they are fucking gorgeous. And now it's time for our traditional funny moments section. I am tired. I'm going to become a princess and I'll never go to school again. Oh, I love this girl. Who the heck wears a tuxedo in the middle of the afternoon anyway? <sighs> I'm crying. God fucking bless you, Deb Crane. I'm so glad to finally meet you. You have no idea. Good night, Usagi. Get up. This girl is me. If you listen closely, you can hear someone saying, what the fuck, as Ami walks away. I am not a garbage can. Unlike in the 90s anime, and thank God for that. Get home safe now, me. Do you know what they say when someone disappears? They call it being spirited away. God bless you, Deb Crane. Behold, the power of warping animation. I can't move. She's too strong. We're no match for her incredible power. Yeah, this show is fucking cheap. <laughs> Me waking up. Thank you to all the patrons for making this review possible. If you'd like to support the channel further, you can pledge on Patreon for perks, as well as pick up some Teespring merch in the description below. Likewise, the links to the first chapter and Goodreads page of my upcoming book are also in the description. I'm Mew to Corn of War, and this has been a shit show.